Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, March 3rd, 2020 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Over the last four years, Let's Encrypt has made a huge difference when it comes to getting websites and other services equipped with TLS certificates. And they just celebrated issuing 1 billion certificates. Now, when we are looking at some traffic statistics, for example, published by Mozilla about how much of HTTP traffic does take advantage of TLS, it's usually these days sort of in the 70 to 90 percent range. Jan took a little bit of different approach uh, to this and he looked at the number of servers that are actually existing based on Shodan. Now, this is a very different picture because many of these servers that Shodan discovers aren't necessarily meant for public consumption, don't have sort of any real traffic to them. So the ratio here looks actually quite different. What Jan found was that over the last few years, the percentage of websites that still use HTTP and not HTTPS was about 42%. Now, still not too bad, given that a lot of these devices being exposed are probably the sort of uh, default configured routers and gateways like that, uh, where it's actually not always that easy to even set up an HTTPS certificate. What's a little bit surprising is that over the last few months, actually the percentage of HTTP went up again a little bit. Uh, so that's a little bit counterintuitive. Looks better when you're looking at Telnet versus SSH. They're currently sort of at uh, four to one. So 80% of services here offer SSH over Telnet. Internationally, things actually look quite a bit different. For example, in China, we only have about 33% of services that are using HTTPS, while in the US, it's around 45 to 46%. Similar for SH versus Telnet in China, we still have about 28% of Telnet, while in the US, uh, that's about down to 5 to 6%. Part of this may also be that uh, some countries like China, for example, tend to use cheaper devices, which of course are less likely going to support encrypted protocols like SH and HTTPS. So it may not just be sort of a political issue with some restrictions on encryption. And Checkpoint open sourced, uh, I think a pretty amazing resource and that's an evasion encyclopedia. This uh, website does list how malware the, but tries to bypass and fool various detection techniques from very simple things like, for example, checking if a file exists. It lists then a number of things uh, that uh, can be done. Also network evasion techniques uh, like, for example, MAC addresses and uh, all the different uh, tricks that malware may use to make it more difficult to detect it are nicely broken down. And of course, with this, uh, you can then easily uh, find ways to detect even the evasion techniques. Checkpoint open source this and uh, also set up a GitHub repository so uh, you can contribute uh, to this project. Overall, it uh, looks quite nicely done and something that I hope uh, people will find useful. And talk about open source and free things. Empire has released version 3.1. With this now you get a multi-user collaboration API and also updated versions of Mimikatz and various other sort of expanded and updated functionalities. And OVASP released Threat Dragon. I have to yet play with this, but sounds like an interesting project. It's supposed to help you with threat modeling. It's a cross-platform application that allows you to do system diagramming and uh, other things are helpful for threat modeling. It's supposed to have a pretty neat user interface from what I've seen. In the past, I've used uh, Visio a lot for this and Microsoft has some nice sort of threat modeling plugins uh, for Visio, but uh, it will be interesting to play with this. So if you have any experience with Threat Dragon for threat modeling, please let me know. 
And Sans put together a new webpage, sans.org slash free with, well, all the free stuff that Sans has to offer. Particularly interesting here, of course, uh, the podcast is listed, but also a number of scholarship and community programs that can get you free or at least highly discounted Sans training. So if you're interested in that, uh, sans.org slash free. And oh, and by the way, yes, uh, there are also four WordPress plugins that uh, can get you pwned. But uh, well, uh, we are done with that. Uh, That's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.